I'm glad for you to see me, I guarantee. I'm gonna taste this jambalaya first. Let's just go ahead on and cook. Get the part of the chicken that I like. Turtle stew, come here, boy. Mm. You know how it looks good? This is going to be good, I guarantee. I talk to it like it knows what I'm talking about. I like it, it's good. I believe in easy cooking, believe me, I do. How y'all are? I'm glad for you to see me, I guarantee. And today, we're gonna cook a pork loin and pork backbone with turnips. Man, you talk about good. Do you think about that? It makes me want to start eating it right now without putting anything on it, but I got to put something on it. What I'm gonna put on here is some garlic powder, some salt, and cayenne pepper, and then I'm gonna pour just about a half a cup of wine and a half a cup of water around there, water around there. First of all, go to a little garlic powder, just a little. We kind of, we sprinkle it on there very lightly, you know. Let's get on there right. And we're gonna bake this. We started off at 350, put it in the oven with an oven at 350 degrees, preheated oven. And then, I got to pat that on there. You, know? yeah, you ain't gonna do like that. That's that side. Then I put salt. Just sprinkle salt on it. Not too much, but enough. And we'll pat that too. Now we'll put some cayenne red pepper on that. It looks like a lot, but it's not. Just enough, really and truly. Now I got to pat that on there. And I got to turn these over and do the same thing again on the other side, see that? With the fat side up, that's the way I like to cook them anyhow, with the fat side up. You know what? I got to rinse my hands. Thank goodness I got that little pot of water handy. <laughs> With that red pepper can get awful hot on your hands, particularly if you reach up to your eyes. Now, put that right there. Do the same thing some more. Garlic powder, just lightly, you know. And that good fine garlic powder. Salt. See, I'm not gonna pat this on this side. I know how much I'm putting on there. Worry not about that. Cayenne pepper. Cayenne pepper is good for you. You know, black pepper, nothing but wood. Did you know that? Nothing but wood, but I like the taste of it. I don't cook with it though, it doesn't cook good. Now, into here now, not on it, but on that side, and down here on this side, we pour the mixture of water, I got to dry my hand and get that, be sure I don't have that red pepper on there. Put that over here out of my way. And put the lid on this. Now that's all it goes on. This is what you call easy cooking. I'm gonna put this in this oven. It's preheated at 350 degrees and then I'm gonna lower it to 325 or 320, whatever I want. Depending on how long I want it to cook. And it cooks quickly, cooks easy. Here, let's go. All right, now partners go in that oven without any, without any arguing or anything like that. And it generally minds me pretty good. Get in there and go to cooking. And in just a little while, I'll lower that. 
I've got to put this out of my way because it's in my way. And what I'm going to do is just put it over here. Put you over there. There you got it. I don't think I'll need this either. Put these over there. If I need you, I know where you are. I can find you. No worry not. Now I'm going to fix backbone and turnips. A wonderful dish, believe me. I know a man that I could call him right now. No matter where he was, what he's doing. He'd quit his job to come eat backbone and turnips. I've got uh, here now, I've got about, uh, let's see, in this pot, I've got to get all that in there, and I'm going to, I'm going to put two tablespoons full of olive oil in there to be sure nothing burns. That's how you do it. Two tablespoons full. I've got my recipe right here. I'll keep it so I'll, I'll be doggone. You got to act like that. Now you got you. See, I'm ambidextrous, ambiguous. Got it. It said two tablespoons, didn't it? Sure did. Exactly two tablespoons. Be willing to bet. Got to put a fire under that now. Got to be sure I get the right one. Let's see. Never do get the right fire. I want to put that on a medium fire, like that. Get on there so you even. Now you even. Now into this, I'm gonna put three cups of, of chopped onion. Good sweet onion. I love onion. Make an onion sandwich every time I get a chance. And two cups of chopped green onion. Like them on your own. Let me put this out of my way so that I can stir this properly. Now you go in there, sing a song. Mm. Then I put about a cup of bell pepper, not quite a cup. I don't think it's a, it's a cup and a half, it's a. It look like a cup and a half, all right. Huh? Let's get out of there now. Let's don't mess up. My hands are clean. Except for a little red pepper. Then I put some celery. A cup of celery, chopped celery. And I stir. You hear that pot, don't you? I hear it. I got on tea, I hear it. Stay still there. Now you stay still. But that's the very thing, dangerous thing I did. I very rarely do it. I generally have a pot holder, and I got one handy right here, right now, in case I need it. But I, you could catch that damn dish towel on on fire very easily with these fires. You know that. Now I put a full cup of. I think that's a cup and a half, a cup chop. It's a cup of parsley. Just, that's a good cup, though, I'll guarantee. Oh, yeah. And I stir. Come here, boy. Oh, we. I got a story to tell you, but I, I, got, I can't uh, do two things at once. I can walk and chew gum, but I got to always be sure I got all this stuff in here. Now, that I put in there with the parsley. I'm going to put uh, two tables, two teaspoons. Now, those are big teaspoons. Mm-hmm, that's garlic. Two teaspoons full of garlic powder. Stir, man. Don't mess it around. Stir that garlic powder into that real good. Now, it looks like a lot of trouble, but it's not. Because this cooks a long time, and it can, it can make a meal by itself. And the backbones I love. Now, into that, I got to put some peanut butter. 
melted in two cups of boiling water. That's what this is. See that right there? That's peanut butter melted in boiling water, and it tastes good. I love peanut butter in the house. Oh, man. Whew. Let's stir that in there as you stand, because that's going to help improve the taste of anything, I guarantee. Can y'all smell this? I can. <laughs> now into this, I got to put, I'm going to put a cup of, well, no, I'm not, we'll put a cup and a half of Sun Sweet Lighter Bake, and it's delicious stuff. It's sweet and nice, but not too sweet. It, it won't be like a, a jelly roll. It's gonna be good pork meat cooked with all these delicious vegetables. And with this sun sweet lighter bake, it helps make a good gravy. I'll tell you that for true. And I got to stir that in there too. Man, this thing gonna be done before I'm ready to eat it, you know what? Better hurry up then. Oh, wee. See that thing nearly caught on fire? It wasn't, thought it was. Now into that, I'm gonna put a cup of dry white wine. People worry about me forgetting about my wine. I don't ever worry about that. I'll get it in there every time I cook. I cook with wine for just one reason, believe it or not, two reasons. I think it enhances the flavor, but better than that, it takes all the bitterness out of onion, bell pepper, sweet onion, anything like that. It takes the bitterness out of it, and that helps. Anything I can't stand is bitter, bitter food. Oh, man. Y'all looking good and smelling good. <laughs> now, I taste it. I got a tasting spoon here. I taste it in a little bit. Now, into that, I'm going to put some mushrooms, sliced mushrooms. Chopped mushrooms, rather. They sliced it and they chopped them a little bit. About, uh, well, I would say there's two cups of chopped mushrooms here. And I, I use all kind of mushrooms, but I particularly I like to use the shiitake mushroom, but these are not shiitake. These are regular mushrooms where any store would have them. In the store where I got this stuff, they had them. And there they are in there right now. Stir that in there too. Mm hmm. <laughs> now I got to put some, all I'm gonna do is put some hot sauce, just a little. I'm not gonna put much. This recipe called for two tablespoons of little and hot sauce. I'm not gonna put that much in there. I'm just gonna put uh, about a tablespoon, just about. I shook it first. You notice that? Exactly a tablespoon. <laughs> it's good, yeah. Stirring man, got to stir that. That's smelling good to me. <laughs> now into this, I'm gonna put some chopped, first of all, I'm gonna put a little salt. I gotta put some salt in there. It says about, uh, a tablespoonful of salt, or as much as you like. Now, a tablespoon is going to be just about enough of this. Of course, there's a lot of meat there and a lot of honey. So I may put a tablespoonful and a Justin Wilson measure of a tablespoon. Now, that's a tablespoon. And that's the rest of Justin Wilson measure right there. <laughs> but then it always comes out. I don't know why, but it does. comes out good. Mm-hmm. Now the turnips come in. We're gonna put the turnips in there. Six cups of peeled and chopped turnips. Aren't they pretty? You know turnips are so good. A soup isn't worth a damn a vegetable soup unless you got turnips in it. Like I say, my hands are clean. I wanna get every bit of that in there. Got it. Put this over here and put the rest of these little things in it, like 
like this one get in there and this one come here to me you backbone ooh I love backbone that is the country way of making a pork chops you know that's all it is stir those turnip in there she's nice and thick you don't need rice with it all you do is you eat it by itself with which, well, I may have a little pork or loin with it when I sit down there to eat now. E -I -I. Come here, you beautiful pork loin. Isn't that beautiful pork loin? It really is. Let's get in there like a little gentleman. And you did too, bless your heart. Stir it in there. Now. I'm going to bring you to a barrel or a boil, whatever you want to call that. And then I'm going to put it on a low fire and cook it about two hours. I think that's about the best, best way to put that. And it tastes better when you cook it slow. That's true. Let me see. There's two pages to this uh, recipe. Well, anyway, two hours. I remember that much about it, didn't I? Now I'm gonna, I'm gonna bring that to a boil, but I got to cut this oven down on that, on those uh, pork loin I got in there. I'm gonna cut that down to about 325 or 320. Actually, 300 is what I'm gonna put it on. And let that cook, and it'll cook just as pretty and nice as anything you ever saw. Got to bring this to a boil, then cut that fire down a little bit. It's about to boil right now. Go and boil, baby. You see a watch pot never boil. I'm watching hell out of that and it's boiling right now. Mmm. Mmm. You know, my mother used to make this backbone and toast, but she didn't have a lot of the things that I put in there today because they didn't have them around at that time. They are. Uh, like for instance, this, uh, this sun sweet light baker, that's wonderful, it really is. And it helps, it helps the flavor too. And you need a little juice in there, and I'll put a little juice in. Come on, boy, that baby wing for me, I'd appreciate it. Get it on the fire right, maybe it'll work. It does. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Come on, baby. That's on medium low, I'm gonna put it up on medium, bring that thing to a boil, I'm gonna put it on simmer, 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 let it simmer, simmer, simmer all it wants to. It'll boil in just a minute, and I'm gonna sit back down over there and eat and tell you all a few stories. Because I got three or two I want to tell you, the old ones that I've told before, but I haven't heard them in a long time myself, and I'll get to where I want to hear them again, you know? Cajun stories, and I'm half Cajun and proud of it, very proud of that. My mama was Louisiana French Cajun, wonderful cook, a creative cook that I inherited her creativity, I think, and that's why I create different dishes most people wouldn't even dream of, and I wonder where they come from with me, too. Now that's beginning to boil. So I'm gonna put the lid on that and lower that fire to a simmer, simmer, simmer and let that rascal cook and cook and cook until it gets tired of cooking. Come on down there, fire. Come on down, be nice. Not too far. There you go, simmering around, and my stomach's growling. All the here, that it tastes, it smells that, and it's, it's doggone good stuff. Before I take a bite of anything, I'm gonna tell you a story, a Cajun story that I'm very few people know this about me, but I'm a safety engineer by profession. I'm a professional member of the American Society of Safety Engineers and have been for too many years. And this happened because uh, I used to train men and women to become safety engineers and safety what They got all kind of funny names for them now, but they're still to me just safety people. And I, a big oil company in South Louisiana brought two Cajuns to me. 
and said, look, we want you to train these men to be good safety people. I said, I'll do my best. Do you know how I train them, huh? They said, no, but we always know that you never have seen one come out that was bad. I said, yeah, one or two, but they didn't stay in safety. I got them out of it. They got to be with me for six months, five days a week, five working days a week for six months. They got to go everywhere with me. You got to pay all the expenses of me and them. Whether I'm making a talk, or if I'm cooking somewhere, or if I'm talking about safety to someone, or, or setting up a safety program, these two men got to go all the time. He said, that's what they said, that's all right. Now let me tell you something about Cajun people. They'll bet you on anything in this world. I've got to, got to remind you that that, that that comes into this story after a while. They, they just, they can't help but bet on anything, I guarantee. Well, these two men, I said, look, I want you to go to Chicago to the National Safety Conference. When you get up there, I want you to go to every class that you possibly can and learn all you possibly can about safety. And when you brought yourself back down here, you can talk with me and I'll talk with you and maybe you can tell me some stuff I don't know and maybe you'll tell me some stuff that I can help you with. But don't miss those meetings, you go to those. Okay, as you stand, that's my name in front. So they went to Chicago and they went to all the meetings. They didn't miss any meeting. They went to every damn one of them. But on the last night, they had a big banquet at eight o'clock in the big boarding house where they were staying, quote, a big hotel. And they met in the lobby at seven o'clock. And one of them said, do you know this fellow was going to make this spoke tonight, huh? I said, no, I don't know him. He said, no, I don't know him. He said, I wonder if she was standing on him. He said, I don't care if she was standing on him or not. I don't know him. And I'm so tired. I've got so much in my head I'm trying to remember so I can talk to you stand about it. I don't know what they did. Let's don't go. Autumn said, okay, let's don't go. Let's go up to one of our rooms, drink a few beers, and watch television. So they went upstairs, and they were watching television. And the television come on there, and there was a good-looking female girl, lady women, sitting on the ledge on the 22th floor of one of them tall buildings in Chicago. And you could hear the television people talk with them, because your television people, they're sneaky. They talk to you, and you can talk to them too, you know? Somebody on television say, don't, please don't jump. She said, I'm going to jump. Please don't jump. Think about you, Papa. I ain't got no Papa. Me, I'm going to jump. One of them Cajuns said, I bet you $50 she don't jump. She said, you got to bet, my friend. Please don't jump. Think about you, Mama. I ain't got no Mama. I'm going to jump. Think about you cheering. I ain't got no cheering. I'm going to jump. Choom, she jumped. And Katie said, here's your $50. See, I can't took that. How come the reason you can't took that, huh? Because you bet, and I bet with you. Nope, can't took it. How come you can't took it? Well, you know, I was watching the 6 o'clock news, and I saw the same thing, and I knew she was going to jump. <laughs> <laughs> that other kid said, I was watching it too, and I didn't think she'd do it the second time. <laughs> Let me pour myself a little wine. A little red wine goes good with pork, goes good with anything. Somebody said, what kind of wine should I have with this? What kind of wine you got? That's all the kind. That's what you have to do. You would take a little sip to see if this is going to taste good or not. Tastes good enough. Let me put a little bit of this pork backbone on my plate. Oh, that look good. Hoo-hoo-hoo-wee. I believe it's going to taste good, too. I'm going to see about it right now. Y'all don't mind, I'm sure. Just take a little taste of this good, tender pork loin. Let's see about this backbone and turnip. I love backbone and turnip. That all good, I guarantee. So good, I got to take another little taste of soap. You know how it is. Ooh wee. Mm, 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 mm. Oh man, oh man. Mm, mm. Mm, 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 mm. Oh boy. Mm. Mm. Wipe your mouth, Justin. All right. Take a sip. 
sip of wine, all right? Sip of wine. Mm, 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 mm. Ooh, boy. Ah. Oh, man, come in back, boom. See if you taste as good as that rose. Tastes even better. It's possible it does, I guarantee. <laughs>